Pranabda, uh, Sagar, and Shurujit, just to give a quick context about uh, you guys so that uh, we can make sure that the next four minutes is spent in getting to know each other. Pranabda? Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Just a quick introduction for the other people to know uh, about yourself. Oh, <laughs> actually, uh, I am a volunteer of Eastern India Palliative Care, Kolkata, and I was the sole caregiver for my beloved wife who combated with uh, metastatic colon cancer for two and a half years. And then I have been privileged to be associated with caregiver Sati. Um, of course, before that, I was a student uh, of, of the online course of Pallium India, where Bhavna Isar uh, was one of the faculties. And uh, I was introduced with her and then uh, I am I became close to caregiver Sati, uh, a support group, a community for the caregivers, past while, present and in future. So in this way, uh, I am being engaged uh, with some noble associations like Palliam India, Caregiver Sati, uh, Patients Engage, and now Elizabeth Kublaras Foundation, all this. Uh, so I spend time. I don't feel lonely. And I know that um, there are uh, supporting teams with me. Uh, who are giving uh, me um, joy, pleasure, and uh, opportunity to do some work for the patients. Now I counsel the cancer patients, terminal cancer patients referred uh, to the uh, EIPC, Eastern Independent Care, um, and their smile not only cancer patients, their family members also, and caregivers also. And this, um, in this way, I come close to the cancer, the terminal cancer patients, and their smiling face um, satisfied me, and I am being satisfied. This is my small introduction. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> Sagar, could you just, Give us a quick intro. Hello. Hi. Sir, this is Sagar Tiltumde from Nagpur, Maharashtra. I'm okay. the student of MSW. Mm -hmm. And just because of COVID, we, it is, we have very much time. So I just think that we just con continue yourself. Means kai na kai busy rehna chahiye, kuch na kuch achcha sunna chahiye, or are you comfortable in Hindi also now? Ah, bilkul. Ha. So, because just because uh, social work field is just like taking care and helping, so that uh, I think that this this topic also may be related. So that's why I wanna engage myself. So, मुझे लगा कि registration it's maybe good for me. So, I'm here. Wonderful. <clears throat> we will be recording. Uh part of the session which we shall make available later as well but uh, uh, hopefully you will be able to uh, involve some of your classmates and other people in this as well shurujit yeah, yeah. quick Thank intro you. quick intro <laughs> see my intro can be very long 
So please give me a time limit. <laughs> you can take the next three minutes. Okay. All right. See, uh, I'm Surajit. I am from Delhi. And uh, I'm an academician, basically. So my family consists or consisted of my, me, my wife, my daughter, my son. And uh, my wife is a counselor and uh, in the psychology profession. And uh, we've been uh, giving care for, to my son. Uh, he was, you know, diagnosed learning disability or ADHD. So I think all the best treatment that could be given I was visiting psychologists and Sonia Philip and then Children's First in Delhi, Kavita Roda Amit then. So my wife being uh, from the psychology profession, my subject is different. I used to manage outside, she used to manage inside. So 2019 April, it was a freaky Friday night. Uh, she had uh, she was suffering from hypertension so one fatal cardiac arrest she left us so i had my grave stricken daughter myself and my son so i've just started managing since then so what i've done is uh, i've helped him this my son is uh, not good in studies but very talented in music so I have a kind of um, tried to manage my life, help my daughter and my son, of course. First one I said, second one is also hypertend, uh, sorry, uh, uh, tension prone, what they call it, uh, depression and tension. Thing. So the easier thing first, I've been able to hold on to my job and do my uh, productive, creative work help my daughter to finish her graduation, take up a job. And uh, she's not, uh, she's not living, started living in Jaipur alone. My son has cleared his class 12, got into music, Bachelor of Performing Arts, classes online. And I am managing you know, his online classes of yoga, music, instruments, online theater, art therapy, etc., etc., etc. So there are four to five departments of my life, basically managing myself, my daughter, my son, and my household. So I'm thinking, uh, do I need any vitamins or pills to mm, mm, kind of increase my efficiency? Because I'm also 57, 58 years old. I'm looking forward to my old age. I think I'll stop here. I don't know anything. Uh, I, I I know I'm I don't know anything. I'm still not able to manage my own self. Um, in for, for example, like uh, in Delhi standards, I'm an idiot because I'm still not able to manage my finances. Okay, uh, the legal hairs and my own balance and everything, my life, things are just lying here and there. But you know, I keep happy. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Shurajit. So <clears throat> we'll just uh, start with the. Uh, webinar now. Uh, I'll give you a quick introduction about uh, <clears throat> Caregiver Sathi. I'm Anish Iser. I'm a part of the Caregiver Sathi team, and we have a couple of my colleagues here as well. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, the goal of Caregiver Sathi is to create an ecosystem of well being and healing for the primary caregivers. We've defined family caregivers as those who are supporting, you know, navigation of terminal illnesses, chronic or other life limiting conditions. And uh, we recognize that they have their own unique challenges. And uh, our goal is to support them throughout the caregiving journey. And uh, <clears throat> as Pranabda just mentioned, we also support them uh, later on after they become erstwhile caregivers. The goal is to help the caregiver and the care receiver lead full lives. How do we do this? We provide technology enabled systems which ensure 
that there's a human connection. We do awareness programs, both online and offline. We have a helpline. We organize healing circles, uh, social media communication to increase awareness and sensitivity. We provide access to relevant information, which is developed by us or curated by us. And so is authenticated information to provide a one-stop shop to family caregivers. And we have a tech enabled platform, including an app. What is it that we've done so far? We have the app and the website and the platform up. We provide online and offline education for different constituents, family caregivers, healthcare practitioners, etc. cetera. Uh, besides the app, we've built a community of active uh, and erstwhile caregivers to support each other as well as an outreach to well-wishers of caregivers to support them. We also organize caregiver stories where uh, under the brand of Gentle Warriors, where we capture some of the challenges and some of the learnings so that that can be useful to current caregivers. We organize the Compassionate Caring series, which is uh, conversations with experts like we have today uh, wherein we can provide access to specialized information and help address questions that might exist. We provide caregiver coaching, family counseling, and volunteer-based respite care. How can you get involved? You could join our healing circles. You can share caregiving stories, help spread the word about the support that's available in person on social media. You could volunteer <coughs> with us help in raising funds or donate yourself. Uh, we encourage college students to intern with us as well as any referrals that you can provide to various other partners, hospitals, or other organizations. Welcome. Uh, the framework that we use uh, to understand the well-being of the caregiver as well as well-being in general is those seven elements of well-being and resilience. These include uh, physiological, uh, there's just some background noise. So could I request everybody to kindly mute themselves? Uh, so physiological well-being, spiritual, psychological, uh, social well-being, legal and financial well-being. We are talking about legal well-being today, life and work purpose, and uh, last but not the least, creative expression. So <clears throat> this is the framework that we have. It's based on the understanding that stress is caused by an imbalance in well-being across these elements. Unaddressed chronic stress leads to mental health issues, including burnout. And uh, we foster building of resilience through practices of mind, body, and soul. Quick introductions. Uh, we have with us uh, Mayuri. Mayuri is an independent lawyer uh, and practices in the area of intellectual property, corporate and family, as well as business law. Mm -hmm. She recognized the need to cater to an audience which needs uh, support on the legal side and uh, a substantial part of our society you know, needs awareness and education on legal issues as well as knowledge uh, related to financial and personal issues. She believes in uh, a battle where personal rights are of utmost value and uh, <clears throat> that fear of court procedures that the hassle and trauma that one anticipates uh, and therefore avoids getting into this conversation comes because of this avoidance of gaining knowledge about one's legal rights. So more about her from uh, Mayuri directly. She's also, uh, I've been reliably informed, uh, a person who's a biker by passion. So more about her uh, <clears throat> from Mayuri herself. Quick announcements. He'll spend the next 60 minutes having a discussion on the topic. There'll be three parts. Initially, we'll have uh, 
the presentation from Mayuri. And uh, at that point, participants are requested to be on mute, uh, listen, and you can, of course, share your thoughts and questions on the chat box. And we will try and include that in the discussion. The second part would be to have a, a question and answer session where you can raise your hand and ask specific questions and get detailed uh, responses on your specific situation. Uh, while this uh, presentation will be recorded, we will not be recording the Q&A session to ensure that uh, your privacy is maintained. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, if you're seated and your camera is stable, keep it on or else you can turn it off. And uh, this discussion will be referenced for designing for the program. So please do share your feedback with us. All right. Uh, with that, over to you, Mayuri. Thank you, Ali. Thank you for such a great introduction. Thank you for uh, inviting me over and to be a part of Caregiver Sathi uh, to a certain extent. Uh, firstly, I would like to start with something uh, where I would like to tell that a person caring about another represents life's greatest value, as everyone knows. Family is not an important thing. It's everything. Um, what would I say to my dad on a bad dementia day? We do better when we work together. I needed this help. I needed his help or I need his help to be able to help him as a caregiver or anybody being a caregiver to me. As a caregiver, we spend so much time, money, energy, taking care of the needs of others. If we are caring for our aging parents or any of our family members with disabilities of our fr or our friends uh, whom we are being a caregiver to, it is essential to ensure that we not only address our own emotional and financial uh, health, but we also have something called as an estate plan in place, which also addresses both of our needs and uh, for the, the needs of those we care for, the one who we are caregiving to. Now, firstly, all of this, the entire journey of an estate planning or making a will or, uh, you know, uh, creating a trust uh, to to what do you say, to, uh, you know, hand over our assets to, through whom, uh, you know, we can pass it on to our future generation. The primary and important part comes up when we find uh, time to strike a conversation between our families. So the primary part is directly not jumping on to making a will. Okay, it is first striking a conversation about estate planning with the family. So, uh, I mean, imagine the thought that we, the way we start with that, uh, you know, thanks for having me for dinner, mom and dad. And I wanted to talk to you about a few things. Uh, to start things off, I want you to think about how you're going to die someday and probably not long from now. And with that out of the way, let's talk about the money. You know, that becomes a very straight point and that's definitely not a great way to have a conversation. In fact, that's not even a conversation anyone would ever want to have. But although very few people would actually be so blunt, that's the seeming subtext. Anytime you talk to your parents or other aging, aging uh, you know, loved ones about will and estate planning. So firstly, there's a nice, uh, there's a reason people are so reluctant. I am sure everyone present here or you know, people we know around are reluctant to bring up these topics. And it has to do with obviously the overlapping um, societal niceties that we have around us that we don't want to be talking about money, point one. We don't want to be seem like greedy or grasping towards uh, our family members. We don't want to think also about our parents dying. That's the very first thing. We don't want to remind our parents uh, that they are going to die. We certainly don't want them to think that we are already planning and uh, planning about their estate or even hoping for their death. But despite uh, of all of this discomfort, it is very important to talk to your parents about, uh, you know, 
estate planning. The only way to approach it is with love, respect, and their best interests at heart. You can not only help them overcome a burden, you know, believe me, estate planning helps overcome a very big burden and put their minds at ease as they enter in a new, a, a new phase of their life. When you plan for the future, that is, you can put the stress of the conversation in the past when there is a will in place, when there is an estate plan in place. Now, the basic questions that, come, that usually come to our mind as an individual, uh, whether we are a caregiver or um, you know, whether we're a, we're a child uh, to our parents who are living, do we want to leave our money to charity? That is the primary question. Do we have uh, children? If we have children, we plan for them. And if we do not have them, are we going to leave our money to charity? Are there any children under the age of 18 that need to be considered being minors? What happens if your family grows? You know, when you do not have children later, when the family grows, do you want to leave money for your future grandchildren? Uh, of course, this question can also come to people who are interested in their 30s or 40s. It doesn't have to be somebody old. Uh, do your family know or any of your member, family members know where the important papers are kept? You know, the entire documentation or, you know, of the assets that your family has or the property, the, the tangible assets or the intangible ones. Uh, would you be comfortable documenting your bank account? insurance policies, investment, and securing place, it place, placing it with a person of your own choice. The primary question is to secure the asset. And uh, again, before uh, straight away going to planning of your succession or planning of your will, the why and how of talking to your parents about their will is important. Now, this is a very sensitive topic People uh, may have issues. They would not even like to talk about, uh, you know, planning a will or, uh, you know, going up to them. If you directly go up to them, them and ask that, okay, when are you going to make a will? But the importance of talking is very clear for the estate planning. The longer your parents are going to go without dealing with it, the more time they spend potentially worrying about it. What are we going to do about it? How am I going to, uh, you know, manage my property? And the less time they spend enjoying their life. So when the will is in place or a plan is in place, uh, we can also call it as an, a plan, a plan uh, for your future uh, generation. And worst case scenario, what will happen is the less time they have to ensure the assets are distributed in a way they want to. In the way, uh, you know, we want uh, their wishes to reflect well in the will. And, of course, we want to avoid any kind of conflict which will come up later when they die. I'm sure, uh, you know, everyone is wondering how they would talk to their parents. But then it isn't, it isn't greedy. It isn't callous. Of course, it is certainly not cruel, you know, talking to them about it. You're going to be their caregiver someday. Uh, it could be also a situation where they are a caregiver for you. They have been, uh, they've, they've raised you. We may not call them as a caregiver when they raised you as a child, but definitely they were there for you. So it is time that, that we be there for them. We make them understand of why an estate plan is important. Now, talking to your parents about their wills and estate planning is certainly an act of love and one that makes sure uh, make sure that uh, they will worry less about, you know, how to go about planning. Uh, firstly, I would also like to tell everyone that you are entitled to leave your money and assets to anyone you choose. It doesn't have to be a family. It doesn't have to be your own children. And provided all of the, this is done legally. Many people want to name a beneficiary in their will who is not a relative. Certainly, that can be done too. Uh, we will widen our uh, scope of interest and we will widen our thoughts, thinking that it will not be restricted to our future generation, our uh, blood relatives, uh, our blood relations, that is. But it will be certainly about anyone that we wish to hand over our assets to.
now something about a will not a technical uh, you know uh, nothing nothing to uh, make it complicated but it is a document if drawn and executed to your state's probate laws ensures that your designated heirs will receive their inheritance when leaving money to a non family caregiver that is even that is possible so there is a caregiver who is not your daughter is you're old and you have a caregiver who is not your daughter or son but is a non family caregiver in even that will be possible you can be in a situation where uh, you would like to write something in your will for the person who cared for you doesn't have to be your own child someone who has taken care of you and you have relied for support and assistance throughout your illness journey it's important that uh, consulting an experienced uh, estate planning uh, attorney in these cases becomes important now what happens when uh, we enter into a caregiving role uh, i'm sure most of us uh, are not even prepared for this not even prepared for uh, you know to be in the caregiving role we always think that oh let's see let's see what will happen later and um, of course the caregiving role is a complex one uh they must uh, a caregiver must consider uh, you know his role as an individual uh you know to the family member that who is ill sometimes these roles are in agreement and sometimes they are uh, competes of course expect that there may be conflict and don't don't be afraid to talk them out to the person who is ill whom you are caregiving to uh now your conversation about future uh it could be in, it could include making a will but uh, it doesn't have to be uh, you know around uh, a, a tentative plan it can be something very serious by planning it uh, by focusing on a caregiving plan that is you may also consider talking generally with your loved one so a conversation talking to them becomes important and uh, here in india even talking or striking a conversations become conversation with the loved ones you know whom we will be care giving to becomes important it could be our parents but a practice where we start striking a conversation and understanding what their wishes becomes important uh it will not be a conversation about what your parents are going to give you in future it could be anything what their wishes so the question to them will be not about how will you divide your property the question to them will be what is your wish and how will you go ahead about it and being there and supporting them to understand their will understand their wish and executing it further now approaching the conversation uh, with an attitude of listening and not uh, telling becomes important dad have you thought about what you want to do if you needed more help this is the way we can ask them as opposed to well, we really need to talk about a plan if we if you get sick you know and um, there comes a checklist a very small one where uh, we think about the bank record in this kind of plan we think about whether a will is in place we think about if there is a power of attorney uh, given to any a person who would be doing the need pull any kind of business contract or rental agreements that are pending uh, uh the the most important part where there is a complete list of assets and debts that we note down and where is it kept where is the custody of it so where there is a will firstly there is usually someone ready to contest it most of the times where there is none someone is ready to fight over it so there will be a fight over the inheritance anyway right so might as well be better start planning to make your own will you can be 18 years old you can you can start right when you're 18 it doesn't have to be that you're 50 and you start thinking about it the most interesting part 
the registration of a will is not compulsory. It can be registered uh, with a sub-registrar of your locality. If at any time the testator uh, wishes to withdraw the will, testator meaning the person making the will wishes to withdraw it, that he wants to change or make changes in the will, he can do so. There was an interesting Supreme Court, uh, court case where um, several wills were made by a person, a gentleman, and he died without revoking any of them. So the court came to a conclusion that he comp compiled all his wills together and consider each part of it. And later, there wasn't any clarity on coming up to a final will, where we also need to understand that if you make a will casually, okay, you need to revoke it if there are any changes that need to be made in future. So today, if I write a will, for my son or anything that I wish to give it to my son or my husband or any of my family members. And after a week, I, I decide that I don't want to give anything to anyone. I would like to give it to charity. I need to revoke my earlier will. That's the way to go about it. Though registration is not compulsory, it can be a handwritten one. Okay. Now, the next part uh, where we can... Uh, simply understand what can be included in a will. Now, all the movable and your immovable assets, firstly, including your real estate, could be your fixed deposits, uh, money in the bank account, your securities, your bonds, uh, proceedings of your insurance policies. Mm, there are retirement benefits. There is art. Even art can be uh, mentioned, a piece of art or a couple of paintings that you have, you can mention them in the will. Your precious metals, if any, gold, silver, etc. Brands, if any, you own businesses, there's goodwill associated with it. Uh, your digital assets, uh, digital assets meaning uh, there are uh, sketches, blogs, websites, email accounts including your Gmail or Yahoo, or whatever. Photographs, even they can be included. And with social websites such as Facebook, Twitter, etc., their login credentials, all of it. And of course, the intellectual property rights associated with your business, including what they are and the method and manner of the storage. Okay, uh, you can write that, okay, how am I going to, the method and manner meaning, if there is a painting, okay, this is how I want it to be preserved. This is how I want it to be framed in a certain way. Or maybe I, this is where I want it to be. If I want my painting to be uh, gifted to someone, I will write such in my will. If I want the painting to be sold, if I want to sell my painting to a friend and the proceeds which will come after selling the painting has to be, has to be given to my son. Even this can be mentioned. The finest of the details can be mentioned in your will. In short, any asset that the testator, that is the person making the will, has in his ownership at the time of his death can be included and distributed as per the desire of the person. You can absolutely do that. How can you write a will? It can be written on a plain paper of any convenient size. It is also necessary uh, and not necessary that the will has to be on a legal paper. It has to be typed. It can be handwritten. Not necessary uh, that it is in a typed form. But for a clear uh, legibility and to avoid any kind of ambiguity arising due to handwriting it is possible that there could be a little ambiguity you know certain letters are not understood words are not understood in your handwriting it's better that we have a typing uh, a typed will which is in a good font size clear which is naturally readable and is recommended that is the one which is recommended mm, if you're a non-muslim meaning uh, you're a Hindu or uh, rather basically a non-Muslim because the laws there are different. Uh, outside uh, India, okay, or uh, you have property situ situated uh, outside India, 
uh, you need to know few things something very basic your indian will you know the will in india can only cover immovable properties situated in india okay so some basic points some uh, things that we need to know and if you are domiciled in india at the time of the demise uh, or the country of your domicile that is you being an nri does not impose any testamentary restrictions your movable properties can also be included in the will since laws of each country are different now as per indian laws the registration of will is not compulsory so a will printed on a plain paper signed by you and attested by two witnesses you know along with their passport number or whatever needs to be written it is a valid will uh irrespective of whether it is pre prepared online or with the help of a legal professional that is ideal uh as an nri if you're outside india as an nri you're legally allowed to make a separate will uh as per indian laws to cover the assets you have in india whatever immovable property or movable properties that you have in india so why not make the best of this uh of course there are different taxations uh, associated with it huge inheritances uh, you know or rather um, a different kind of inheritance tax which is there in different countries now deposit of will um deposit meaning uh, where can we keep it how if we, if something happens to us how do we know where to go find for the will and if your parents have made a will how do you know where it has been kept a will once made can be deposited in one of the following um, safe keeping now that i will discuss uh it could be uh, someone you can deposit your will with a lawyer uh, it could be with a banker uh it could be with a registrar that is a testator may deposit the will himself or through an agent so you have an agent a uh, power of attorney that you will execute in the name of the agent and then you can keep it in his custody and then what happens is uh, now since there is the ongoing crisis of the covid uh, we also need to understand um, you know that the ongoing crisis is usually um, it requires us to socially distance ourselves right but uh, not to stagnate ourselves okay so many of us will work from home in the coming weeks and this downtime which we have presents you with a unique opportunity to actually start thinking about the estate plan and discuss the same with your family who are likely to home uh, to be uh, home with you so now since your family will be around most times it is a nice idea to strike a conversation with them now we have a, a poll here which says who do you identify with are you an active caregiver are you uh, would you were you a caregiver in the past a well wisher of a caregiver okay so uh, we are going to step into the role of a caregiver at some point of time okay and uh, thinking about your death and the world destruction is definitely not a recipe for a fun afternoon but it is crit critical that uh, you don't ignore this fact either now taking the time to think about how you're going to implement your will and uh, your estate plan is not something only for the elderly so we have to remove this from our mind that making a will thinking about your estate uh, you know distribution is not something for the elderly all the time it could be anyone the moment you turn 18 years of age if you're doing really well and you have something to yourself as your property you can start uh, thinking about how to go about it no matter uh, an individual's age the time to start planning for a will is now when your time uh, your your time does finally come you can make life simpler for your family by avoiding any kind of conflict which may arise when you die by taking proper steps and this is the ideal and responsible way to go ahead for planning your estate there are cases 
uh, around us where we observe that un that there's no will that is made uh, the property or the estate is stuck for like years together you're trying to claim it your friends are trying to claim it there are family issues there are conflicts so much of hassle in case there is if there is no will or uh, you know like a valid will that is succession laws follow so in india we have succession laws uh, that will uh, you know that will come in the picture and uh, it is said that uh, a person without a will dies intestate that is there is no will and the succession laws will be followed however um, what happens is uh, it depends on different uh, you know it, the laws are different for hindus or uh, different for muslims christians parsis who inherit the estate of a person dying estate in intestate sorry so in the matters of intestate succession intestate meaning the person who did not make a will a court may then issue letters of administration or there is a succession certificate but to claim that there is a procedure and so much which revolves around it there's another way uh, that we create a trust and um, you know that's the in fact one of the excellent ways where a trust is created and all your property including tangible and intangible is a part of the trust and it becomes much simpler than to execute it when you die there are situations when parent a parent dies or parents die and the adult children don't have a clue they are dealing with the emotional issue firstly that they lost their parent they were caregiver to their parents they lost them and after losing their parents they are searching throughout the bottom desk drawers of the desks and looking through the checkbooks now what to do how to go about it and what is going to happen there there may be financial issues that may come up also it is the ideal time to talk about planning uh, for any kind of medical incapacity which may come we often thank that we are in good health we often express our gratitude to the universe and to the people around that oh i am in my good health and i'm i'm healthy and i'm happy and there is nothing that will come you know come in up in my way for the next few years you never know uh who would look after your estate and make key decisions about your wealth is a primary question and uh, if one fine day you suddenly lose capacity what will happen then so the caregiver mantra is to remember that the only control you have is over the changes you choose to make the biggest change that we can ever ever make right now is to start strike a conversation to start a discussion in the family about an estate plan in place it doesn't have to be directly jumping on to making a will taking a paper and sitting with it it could be something simple about what will happen to your property again um, the immovable or the movable part comes later but how will uh, who will carry the legacy uh, who, who will inherit the property um you know there has to be something strong around it and that is your wish so i wish you know we always say i wish that this should happen or i wish that um something simple as you know if i for my son i usually say that i wish that i can be around him all the time but there's work and you know so that is a simple basic wish that i want to be with him and i imagine if something happens to me tomorrow uh and uh, somebody else have has him in custody that will be something against my will or wish even that can be mentioned and okay if something happens to me tomorrow i want my son to be raised with this person or in in a certain way or i want these things to you know go over to him or anybody else that i wish to so uh very sensitive though but very critical very important that uh, you know these things have to be taken care of so the primary thing again as i say is to understand what will happen uh, when we are in the caregiver role we may not be ready for caregiving right now but yes there comes a situation where we indirectly uh, come in the caregiving role and we have to plan accordingly it is important to understand that yes 
you will be a caregiver one fine day or there will be a caregiver for you in some uh, role it could be anyone it could be your husband it could be your wife it could be your child and all of this doesn't have to be related to your age that oh i am old i need to make a will now we can always simply ask that mom and dad what do you think your wish is or what do you will towards anything in future they may simply come up with saying that i wish to see the world i need to travel to europe they want to see the world it could be something which is their wish so why not plan the estate accordingly where uh, they get enough to uh, see the world and uh, you know their wish is fulfilled and once they know that they are sorted in their brain that oh i want to travel the world my wish is fulfilled and what i have i want to do is this uh, a certain amount of uh, finances that I, that i want to dedicate to uh, traveling the world and a certain amount i wish to give it to my kids that way you will always know that my parents were happy when they lived you know that is the kind of confidence that the parents need to have in us that my child is working towards uh, helping me me understand my wishes so yes uh, if anyone wants to ask something so uh, before uh, we move into that section i think it will be helpful to look at three situations one <clears throat> where there is just like you mentioned it's uh, hygiene almost or it's uh, necessary for an adult above a age of let's say 25 once you have some asset where you have an opinion hmm. on what you want to do with it that is one aspect of having a will uh, a second aspect is where there is a Uh, a patient caregiver uh, situation where the caregiver is expected to outlive the patient okay right so as a child i am taking care of my parent i am expected whether yes. it happens or not nobody knows but it is expected that the child is going to probably outlive the parent right and then there is a third situation where uh due to whatever reason it is expected that the person being cared for is going to outlive the person who's taking care of them right so i think we've covered uh, a fair amount of and thank you for that i think it will uh, make a lot of us think about why it's important to figure out what we'd like to do uh, even when there is no illness right and how to initiate the conversation i think it will also be important to uh, one uh, the example you said about what is your wish your wish is to travel and so okay let's figure out how to manage your estate so that there is liquid money right. made available so that you can do it right 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 similarly what in your experience what are the different kind of things that uh, can be planned for if this conversation is had so one is for example you talked about the vacation what are the other such uh, examples that we can give to the audience here on how to you know initiate the conversation right what are the other benefits of planning a will that a person can achieve in his or her own lifetime mm -hmm. correct if you can think of some yeah yeah sure uh so the benefits of planning a will is uh, firstly the confidence okay you don't have to worry often about now what will happen to your estate now i'm talking from the point of view of the person making the will so if i am the person making the will yeah uh you know and see i'm like 50 years old and i have already made a will so there is confidence that i have that my child okay will not have to go through any kind of hassle or any kind of uh, you know court complications when i die he will be free of it he will have the uh, it will be uh, you know the availability of my uh, what do you say my assets or the finances or whatever that is made available to him are easily made available to him right they will they will be in place he will have easy access to it with the help of a will 
and so firstly when there is confidence i can uh, enjoy my life peacefully i don't have to worry about what will happen because all of our lives we usually strive now with a layman say uh, you know he has kids and uh, there's a family there's a future generation the most simple thing is he will always work all his life towards earning for his children you know that's the point that okay why am i doing this now why am i earning or of course there is an ambition there is a goal but uh, it will definitely be for uh, my kids you know that that's what a normal layman says and then again there is a point where okay this is for my kids but there is something that i want to do for my parents too if i outlive my parents i will do this for them so now if i'm just 30 years old and if i outlive my parents tomorrow that right tomorrow and if i have a will in place okay which is not revoked which is there you know which is typed and there is somebody who knows so it is better that there is a person who knows that there is a will in place around you somebody you can keep it confidential it doesn't have to be very uh, you don't have to be vocal about it in your entire family so there is a will in place now I, if i outlive my parents they will know that mayuri has uh, left something for us okay left meaning it could be anything um, in uh, you know in the case of money or money's worth and uh, we of course have a loved one uh, It doesn't have to be our parents, our children. It it could be anyone, uh, you know, who has been there for us in our entire journey of uh, maybe our work, our, our okay. So uh, that is a question where uh, I plan a will right in the right age. Firstly, the awareness of making a will becomes important. So now, if I sit with my friends and discuss simply that, oh, do you have a will? it may sound stupid right? i we are i'm just so young and where will i you know why do i need feel the need to make a will but what if if you outlive your parents uh, there is there was a case where um, one of my friend uh, you know died of a ro- in a road accident um, and of course there was no will that was made in bhavna knows about it so since there was no will but when she was around she spoke highly about what she wishes to for her child so when you speak highly about something that you want a certain thing to be done for your child including your estate it is important that it is on a paper so that there is somebody who will execute later when you outlive maybe your parents or when you die so a will is a legal term but then there is something called as a wish if you wish that your jewelry has to be or uh, maybe given to someone um, you know so it could be a friend it doesn't have to be your uh, husband anyone so all of this there is a benefit of making a will as anish asked me that what are the advantages primarily the confidence the confidence that we have um, in making a will what will happen is 80% of your questions are resolved right in plan in the planning you know when you have a will in place so now since your most of your questions are resolved you are rest assured that uh, all of my life whatever i have earned it could be your respect it could be your goodwill that you have in your business it could be the money it could be the tangible intangible properties the art our possessions basically so all of this are named after someone so you know that oh this this goes to this person and why because there was my wish in it and when you die you die peacefully thinking that oh i have my wish in something and that will be executed that will be taken care of since the legal part of has of it has been done and the beauty of it being it doesn't have to be on a legal paper it could be on a simple white paper where it is just typed so that's the beauty of it and uh, yes that's the major advantage yeah i think uh, <clears throat> from an emotional and psychological perspective what they say is that uh, you know worry about the future is is something that uh, <clears throat> you know uh, a, the biggest concern for most people right but 
I know that in a stable condition, I have decided and planned for any eventuality which might come up. And so my worries are also taken care of in a way. I'm not saying Absolutely. that I'm going to become a billionaire. Whatever I have, at least it is planned for to the best of my abilities is a certain peace of mind uh, that comes uh, from it. So I think that's, that's actually very uh, <clears throat> helpful uh, for anyone and i think it's like you know you take uh, the, the you know why are you investing why are you taking life insurance all of it is to eventually pass ensure that the beneficiaries are taken care of so in the same clinical way that one takes an insurance and uh, does all of that and plans their life in the same way one should probably approach uh, even the creation of the will and not create all the drama around it, ki bhai, it is death that you are thinking about, etc. So the second scenario that I talked about where uh, <clears throat> there is a patient who is not expected to outlive the caregiver and the caregiver has to have that conversation. So at that point in time, the patient is already feeling a bit uh, stressed that I'm ill, I don't know what's going to okay. happen, and all of that is happening. If hmm. they don't have a will at that hmm. point in time, then starting that conversation can be a little trickier. Right. So, you know, uh, best case scenario is obviously to have everything in place before a eventuality happens. But in that situation, hmm. what you suggest is a good way because uh, what I feel is that as a patient, you can actually mandate and say, you know what, I want the best of medical care. I want uh, expenses, no problem. I don't care if you sell the house, but I want to survive, right? Right, right. Somebody might say, you know what, don't spend more than five if I have to, and I want to come back home and die peacefully. Somebody might have mm -hmm. that wish, right? Right. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, uh, a will can be used you know, not just an advanced medical directive, but even this estate planning will can be used as a way to give guidance hmm. in terms of what to do in that situation, right? So any advice that you have for caregivers in terms of if they end up in a situation that a will is not there, hmm. Hmm. how do they start the conversation? But so the now, person, is, hmm. person is unwell. The loved one is unwell. Unwell. Yeah. Okay. That's a trickier situation, right? Right, right, right. So uh, here we will uh, have to approach the person who is unwell in a way that let's consider what he wants, you know. Uh, it doesn't have to be in terms of financial value. It can be something emotional, which is, uh, as you said, that uh, he doesn't want, uh, you know, the loved one to spend out of his own pocket. He wants, he has some estate and he wants you know, that estate to be dissolved and the money, the proceeds which come up and to be used for him, you know, for uh, treating him. Even that is something which can be considered so that he is aware that, because the primary thing which will uh, worry, uh, put him in a worry is, oh, I'm unwell and something happens to me tomorrow, I may die and my estate will just uh, be distributed because he has not made a will, that is. So instead of, uh, you know, putting him in a situation of a worry, what we can approach him with is uh, forget about uh, what he has to give to others. We will always put that person in priority. Asking him, approaching him in a manner that since you are unwell, we would like to know what is the best thing that can be done for you from us and how can we help you. That's why as I, when I started my webinar, I... Uh, used a quote where um, what would I say to my dad on a bad dementia day we do better when we work together I needed his help to be able to help him so I would definitely need his help to understand what he wants to if he's able to convey or if, he, you know, if he's in a position to convey it to me even if he's unwell I can even uh, understand few parts of it I can try to execute it and it is, uh, if it is practically possible that uh, if he allows me to go ahead and use the proceeds uh, of his estate, 
which belongs to him for his purposes of uh, treatment you know for the to treat him or uh, if he wishes that okay i don't want much of the treatment i wish to go around um, uh, you know uh, traveling or i wish to uh, maybe do something or spend my time uh, you know in a place which is peaceful or serene whatever whatever it could be anything of his choice so we will always put his choice and his decision uh, in priority and our approach will also be of the same nature that it will not be about oh, what have you planned how are you going to distribute your property it will always be about what he wishes that is so it, his wishes may not include distribution of his assets his wishes may only include using all of his money or all of his uh, assets to himself and that is fine yeah so at least we know that this person who was unwell died later uh, and all his wishes were fulfilled you know so there is nothing which made him unhappy so the primary intention of all of this which will happen around us where we do not have any greed and we have a very simple intention or a clear clear intention that we need to understand what the person wishes what does my dad wish you know i, I would simply think that oh dad what do you want we we are ready to support you in your decision where you do not want to distribute your assets you do not want we do you do not want us to inherit your property uh, rather you can you know sell off your assets use the money and might as well use it for your own for your own happiness and that is okay because we will be confident then that this is what my dad wanted even if he was unwell i was still there for him as a caregiver and he was happy you know when when i was around and it was his wish that he wanted to enjoy some part of his estate and he wanted to give uh, or uh, rather distribute it to the future generation so uh, let's take the scenario where the person writing the will <clears throat> uh is anticipating say that person is a caregiver to a, a, a child uh or or uh you know who's differently abled or has some other restrictions uh that are there what is the best way for a parent to you know ensure that the child is taken care of when the child is not able to take so when we spoke earlier uh, when we had the conversation earlier you talked about the whole trust thing earlier also today you mentioned about the whole power of attorney or executor concept right so maybe right. you could shed a little light on that that will be helpful sure so as we always know that uh, a child who is a minor you know always as a guardian something as simple as uh, you know when your child is admitted in school and the school uh, management wants to know that who is uh, a third person apart from the mother and the father who would like to be associated with the school as a guardian so a guardian always comes into a picture when the child is a minor the child is differently abled that is either mentally disabled or physically challenged could be anything so in such cases it is ideal to appoint a guardian uh, who will help uh the person uh, executing the will which is made uh, by you that is when you die uh, making a will and the guardian will take it further uh that could be approaching uh, the lawyer who has the will in custody or anybody who has the will in custody so name of the guardian can also be mentioned in the will saying that uh, these are the things that i wish to uh, you know give to my child who is differently abled and this is the name of the guardian who is in capacity or who will be in capacity uh, to take it ahead so that is one thing second thing is again as i said a trust formation of a trust is an excellent way to approach uh, or rather uh, to execute your will or rather uh, there will no, there will be no will rather it will be a trust where your 
a trust will be holding all of your uh, assets uh, in your intangible or tangible form and the trust will further ensure that your child who is mentally uh, disabled or physically challenged uh, is taken care of you know when it comes to your assets yeah over to you anish hello Yes, yeah, sorry, I was just unmuting myself. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, um, are there any, in your experience, any uh, special situations, uh, you know, where, you know, you talked about the checklist in the beginning, right? Uh, similarly, are there any special situations, etc., which you think, uh, you know, which you might have come across in experience, which will help the audience that you'd like to uh, talk a little bit about? Of course, uh, anybody who has questions, please uh, raise your virtual hand and we can take them up as well. Sure. sure. But any special situation that you can think of that you'd like uh, to Sure. There is a situation where, um, you know, uh, a family or friend, uh, you know, where they have a child who is uh, autistic and, uh, you know, the autistic child now is capable to, you know, be on his own. He is learning things. Uh, he is interested in few activities or, you know, hobbies that he pursues. But um, when it comes to employability or uh, having a family of his own, maybe a marriage, a prospective marriage in place, uh, would be, say, difficult in a, in a case like that. Or even if there is a marriage in place or whatever. He may not be in the capacity to understand what his parents would wish and um, if they die, making a will. You know, they, he will not be able to understand that what they even wanted. So in such cases where the child is phys physically or mentally challenged, uh, we can certainly consider this case where a will is recommended because, um, you know, it, it will make sure that he receives what his parent, parents wanted to give him. Hmm. So, so yes, so that's the reason a will becomes important. And uh, again, the age factor does not have to be there. It doesn't have to be that you're old and you're making a bill. You have no idea. I mean, of course, in the COVID situation where people have died randomly, uh, this is the best time you can even plan and understand what can be done to your estate. Right. Uh, one of our uh, caregivers that we've uh, interacted with, uh, she's not here right now, but... Uh, uh, in in her case, her uh, her sibling has a condition uh, because of which it is anticipated that she will have to take care of the uh, sibling, hmm. uh, you know, for the rest of the sibling's life. And uh, <clears throat> in that case, what the parent did was they sort of notionally divided it into half, but gave the uh, authority or whatever hmm. the executor to the sibling. Okay, okay. So I guess there are options like that where one can uh, also plan for some expenses. Like, for example, if somebody has a, a medical need of five thousand bucks a month, hmm. you can factor in inflation, put it into a certain kind of an account so that the proceeds keep coming on a monthly basis. I guess there's some things of that are of possible like that as well right 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 so what so, does one need to do to create a structure like that so what you can do is uh, firstly before any uh, any kind of planning it is important to consult a professional as i said because each case is different and uh, with each case being different there are uh, variations where uh, a person uh, would be looking forward to something and um, it could be in the case of a legal aspect or a financial aspect so we need to understand whom do we need to approach to in the first place. Is it a lawyer? Is it a finance financial planner? Uh, who is it? 
and once we have professional help in place uh, we will be you know it gives us a clarity of how we are going to manage our finances uh, the best person you know uh, the best person rather to plan his finances or uh, to understand that my anybody around him it could be a relative it could be his children it could be uh, the spouse needs help or he may need uh, any kind of financial assistance in future he will certainly have his uh, plans in place even before the world knows or even if before uh, his fam family knows he will make sure that uh, you know this is my plan and this is how it needs to be executed so being clear firstly about what you want uh seeking financial or legal help on how it is to be done how it is to be executed becomes important right so i think uh figuring out that i need to there is a need because of the unpredictability of life there is a need to plan correct and there are experts available out there to whom i can then you know for right. example express my desire and they can help structure it in whatever way uh makes the most sense True. the other thing that we had spoken about uh, the other day i think uh, as as caregivers uh, what people can do is that they should make their will first they correct with the parent or the person who's uh, who's the who's uh, unwell and tell them right. that i am doing this i am fit and fine i am doing it because i want to have that certainty that my wishes will be met maybe that can help uh right. influence that behavior in uh, others as well uh, are there any questions that we can take up uh the poll that we had run interestingly uh we very few participants stood no why probably black friday shopping uh, out of the <laughs> people who did respond to the question none of them has a will and none of their people who they're taking care of them who are they who they are taking care of has a will so that's the question uh, where we need to answer this first that does a will uh, make you happy does making a will make you happy or the the regular succession laws which will be applicable when you die you know imagine the succession laws apply when you die and then uh, your property is distributed among people whom you may not want uh, your property to be you know a part of Yeah, I mean, like it, uh, one of my friends was telling me that uh, when his grandma, uh, his grandmother and father uh, had the name on the flat, and it was going in for redevelopment, and suddenly for the grandmother's portion, they had to look at every legal heir that was there for the grandmother and get approvals from all of them before they could give the house for redevelopment. Correct. so uh, i think uh, what's the definition of a legal heir according to succession law so legal heir will be uh, firstly um, you know uh, your blood relatives that is your blood relations all uh, not all necessarily now uh, you know it is uh, the first uh, your your first blood relation one is your you know primarily your children and then there comes your uh, wife or your spouse who is not your blood relation okay or uh, it could be any spouse either of them and then it follows ahead to your own parents so the primary uh, circle being your own parents your children and your spouse and if uh, they survive you it's uh, great you know it is in the primary circle and if not then it goes beyond it could be uh, then it is your brother that is your uh, blood relation and uh, so on so if i don't the have a will <clears throat> if i don't have a hmm. will and i have a premature death hmm. then part of my estate will go to my parent right and instead of 
that money coming back to my children later on it can actually go towards my sibling side and all of that without me having right. any control over it right right so imagine that happening and uh, you know so so that happens so of course ch- children uh, are the you know the primary um, you can say there is a, a class to it so there are there are, there are these class one hairs and uh, that so there is a list of descendants that you will have uh, okay so there are children then there are your parents and there is your spouse and then the uh, siblings as you can say so uh, let's take a, a, a simplistic scenario of a classic middle class we are not talking about huge uh, estates and huge families and all of that hmm. right just basic right. uh uh stuff is there hmm. for that person hmm. what are the unique advantages of having a will as compared to not having one where the assets are not very big so right so when the assets are not very big what happens is um, you know when there is there's no will in place firstly as you said and the assets assets are not much it could be something uh, of say around uh, 5 lakh in value or rather there is not much of the financial value involved that there is nothing much that can be done it could be um, a decision which is mutual in the family in such cases because there is no point in approaching uh, the court for this so that is the conclusion there there is nothing much that can be done there the assets aren't much but uh, as i said uh, the simplest of the things that are that can be included in a will and the complicated one which in, in, involves your property uh, of high value which is immovable that is real estate and hence making a will becomes important or assigning your property to a trust is also equally feasible so uh, where does something like organ donation uh, play a role is that something you talk about in the will also or is it certainly even that is something where uh, you can talk about in a will you can write uh, that you wish to donate your organs and uh, you want your um, say an ex member of your family to make it possible so if there is a guardian named Uh, in the will, or if there is a person, or a power of attorney has been given to a person for executing the will, you will know that you know the person will know that which um, which uh, institute, or you know, or rather uh, which association, or anybody who is into organ donation, right, uh, to approach to. So even that can be included. Sure, I'll just pause the recording because one of our participants. <laughs> 